Our next guest was recently named in Time's 2023 100 Most Influential People. Kate Orff is a landscape architect, a Columbia University professor, founder of New York's Scape Studios, and is widely seen as a leading international voice in climate adaptation. She has been here in Aotearoa, New Zealand at the Institute of Landscape Architects Conference and she joins us this morning. Good morning. Hello. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for being here and being so influential. Oh, <laughs> I, know. I was as surprised as anyone to, to get that phone call with uh, Doja Cat and the entertainer and Mbappe and then little old me there trying to do some climate adaptation and nature-based uh, design in the middle. So it was fun to, to, to be named uh, an influential person. Very cool. Tell me what, because I think when you think landscape architecture, people might have an idea on their head of what that is. What is it to you? Yes. Well, a, a big part of what I've been trying to do in, in the past uh, decades is kind of break the mold. Uh, landscape architecture, sometimes you think, well, yes, they're going to make a municipal park or improve my, my garden. But I really feel that today in an era of extreme weather, climate change uh, and and you know more sort of lack of social cohesion uh, that landscape has a big role to play in kind of just bringing nature back into cities thinking more globally and more synthetically about the role of design to try to heal the planet to try to bring people and natural systems back together and so I feel like that's a strong course for for climate adaptation is to to, to sort of go back to our roots which is really people and the environment, you know, social systems, natural systems working together. And it's this designed kind of new form of nature that we're going to need to bring and that we're going to need to this, this new ethos, this new set of talents that we're going to need to bring back into our cities in order to in order to adapt and, and be healthy and thrive. Yeah, I'm actually just looking at an image behind you, which has just changed, mm -hmm. but it was of Auckland City. Yeah. Uh, obviously a lot of city, not a lot mm -hmm. of green. We've actually done the reverse <laughs> with this image that's popped up. But can you talk us through the breakwater project in New York that you have been working on? Because we've had a lot of flooding here in yes. New Zealand recently, severe flooding. Yes. And you obviously had super storms, Storm Sandy, and this breakwater project that you've been working on is trying to do exactly what you're talking about. Yes. So, yeah, New York was, was uh, I mean, living through uh, the, the sort of climate change in New York has been so instructive. We had a very heavy rain event about uh, called Hurricane Irene, and then we had Superstorm Sandy. That really kind of opened everybody's eyes to say, we have to wake up we have essentially constructed vulnerability by filling in our wetlands, by you know bringing uh, hardening our shoreline. Um, you know, we 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 uh, in a way have like fabricated this this kind of very precarious version of city in the world. And so, Superstorm Sandy was was a massive wake up call. We had flooding, and I'm so sorry to to hear about the major events that that you experienced. We had flooding, and Sandy was a major wind event too. So we had very very high wave action literally crashing into buildings uh, so after Superstorm Sandy I worked with the mayor's office to develop um, as part of a team to develop this comprehensive coastal protection plan so we had a big vision coordinated vision and then out of that vision a number of key projects emerged and so one of them was the living breakwaters project and so what that is and you know New York was once home to some of the world's best oysters, right? Our 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 our, um, our, our harbor went from like 25% oyster reefs to zero percent oyster reefs. So those oysters in the past would have calmed the water, cleaned the water. Um, provided kind of a natural storm buffer, but of course that situation has collapsed. So what the breakwaters do, it's literally a kind of a, a, a necklace of rocky structures uh, with what I call reef streets, which are kind of crenellated uh, uh, sort of forms that almost mimic the, the complexity of an oyster reef for finfish habitat and for shellfish habitat. And then those rocky structures are seeded with oysters. It's almost like, you know, accelerating what would be a natural process if you had a healthy oyster population. And so over time, they'll grow, uh, uh, they will slow the water, they will uh, reduce wave impact, they'll keep the shoreline from eroding. Um, and of course, they'll rebuild this rocky intertidal habitat that mm. we have completely lost. Uh, so your job is actually to try and 
undo or reverse some of yep. what has been done by us over the last 100 years or more right. in, in cities. Right. Another thing that I think is fascinating, and of course I'm an American here in Aotearoa, and so I see see your your culture, the, the diverse culture here with my, my own eyes, but I see an incredibly high nature IQ here, whereas I feel like in, 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 our, in American cities, or we've somehow really lost that. So another facet of the Living Breakwater project is really to bring um, school children and educators to the shoreline. So we have a full school curriculum that's been designed to bring students and their teachers to the shoreline so they can kind of learn by doing hands-on science-based learning. And, uh, uh, and so that's just kind of another facet of the project that's really exciting because now there are 50 schools in, in Staten Island with like oyster gardens and baskets and so on uh, <laughs> out of the shoreline and making notes and so on. So it's like, it's trying to hit the reset button really and kind of repair some of those things that have been broken relative to people's like even knowledge of the natural environment in addition to doing a physical uh, wave reduction. Yeah, that's reduction. fascinating. And, yeah. and lessons I'm sure that we will will learn and, and hopefully adapt here a little bit as well. Yeah. Thank yeah. you very much for coming in this morning. Thanks so much. Great to have you on. It is 25 Great. after 8. That's Columbia University Professor Kate Orff.